Good morning. Welcome to another message from God's Word. We have been doing a, a quarterly stewardship study. So every every three month every three months we've been taking a special Sunday under the theme that there's a time for everything. And uh, this quarter, the emphasis is on a time to plan. And we're always talking about the plan that God has for us uh, based on his plan that he accomplished for us in Christ. So this morning from Mark's gospel, we'll be talking about uh, the reason that Jesus heals us because it's all part of his plan and his purpose for us. Let's begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve him as his dear Father, but we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins by the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child, and may God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. The name of our God, whose will is always just and holy, dear fellow followers of our Lord. In honor of Mother's Day, I'd like to begin with the answers a Sunday school class gave when asked about mothers. First question, why did God make mothers? To help us out of there when we were getting born. She's the only one who knows where the scotch tape is. Mostly to clean the house. Next question, what ingredients are mothers made of? God made mothers out of clouds and angel hair and everything nice in the world and one dab of mean. What kind of little girl was your mom? Well, I don't know because I wasn't there, but my guess would be pretty bossy. What did mom need to know about dad before she married him? His last name? Does he make at least $800 a year? Did he say no to drugs and yes to chores? What does your mom do in her spare time? Mothers don't do spare time. And the last one, what's the difference between moms and dads? First answer, moms have magic. They make you feel better without medicine. And moms work at work and work at home. And dads just go to work at work. Well, to summarize, in the minds of kids, and yes, in reality, moms serve their families, period. In fact, that's the great thing about moms. If you ask them when, when no kid is screaming or pulling a handful of worms out of his pocket, moms will tell you that they love serving. It's hardwired into their nature. Think about it. What's the worst thing that can happen in many homes? Mom gets sick. Because then chaos ensues until she's back on her feet again to restore order. Well, today we're going to talk about some planning. For your Lord does have plans for you. Otherwise, he wouldn't have gone to the cross. To accomplish those plans, you need his helping and his healing hand, both physically and spiritually. So today, let's talk a little more about the reason Jesus heals you. Well, first of all, he heals you so that you, like moms, are able to serve. This is seen in the account brought forth in today's gospel lesson. Peter's mother-in-law got sick, really sick. She was consumed by a fever so bad that she couldn't attend synagogue that day. And was laid up in bed. Jesus had just driven out a demon that day at the synagogue. Immediately went to the home of Peter's mother-in-law with a few of his closest disciples. It was common practice to attend a special meal on the Sabbath, and it would make sense that a few of those these meals would have been hosted 
by this woman. We got to the house. Mark gives us a simple yet tender account of what Jesus did next. Verse 31. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her. Do we the man who just cast out a demon from a stranger, now casting out the fever from Peter's beloved mother-in-law? Peter would remember that. But here's where I want you to pay special attention. What did this woman do after she was healed. She didn't utter a soft thank you and ask for some privacy to get some rest. She didn't call the local newspaper and give them her front page story. She didn't even leave the house. No, Jesus healed her. And her first question was, let's see now, where did I put the eggs? Or maybe as Mark puts it so simply, she began to wait on them. Peter's mother-in-law used the gift of health she had been given to do what she could do out of thanks to Jesus. She served. And that's why Jesus gives gifts to us like time and health and wealth and education and so on. It's why he heals us. It's his plan so that we can serve. But, but maybe we're thinking, well, I haven't been healed by Jesus. And I imagine you're probably right if you're thinking only about the healing that, that the only kind of healing that, that me, like when you have cancer infesting your body and, and then all of a sudden the next week the uh, scans come up negative. Maybe that's going to happen from time to time. Jesus has power to do that. Think about another way. Why do you think you're able to be listening to this message today and not suffering from a terrible fever that, that kind of keeps you semi-conscious? Who do you think made it possible? Many of us have never had cancer. Many of us have had broken bones, but they've, they've healed. We've all had colds and then the flu, and yet we, we didn't die because of the incredible way God made our bodies with immune systems. Take that immune system away. A virus could sweep through your body and take you out just like that. Who's responsible for healing you in all these ways? Well, think of what you might say to a child after you've patched up yet another boo-boo. Pray to Jesus to make it better. Will he? Sure. Jesus heals us every day, and because he does so, he deserves our thanks. And just how do we thank him? We serve. To do anything else is a waste of Jesus' healing. Imagine you're laid up in the hospital, struggling with some medical problem. Someone says to you, I bet you can't wait to get better, to get rid of your pain, or, or to get out of that bed so you can go travel more again. Did it ever cross your mind to say, I want to be healed so that I can serve? Well, that's Jesus' plan for you. But there's more to why Jesus heals you. Simply put, he does care about you physically. Sometimes God allows pain to enter our lives because he wants to show us our need for him. See, pain turns us around if we forgot about him. Pain reminds us that we're, we're not home yet. Pain keeps us from being satisfied with this world. Pain has a way of keeping us longing for the only thing that will satisfy us, the one person, Jesus. Think of how blessed you are. Not every life lived in this world includes knowing God, but yours does. Pain leads us to cry out to the one who has lived his life through human tears. We even asked why of his father on the cross. Show the world beyond a shadow of the doubt that he cares so very much for you. Pain leads us to seek out Jesus. That's exactly where our text takes us next, verses 32 and 33. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door. Can you imagine uh, Peter saying, Jesus, um, we have company. Who is it? It's the whole town. Let's understand what was happening here. It was, it was, it was still the Sabbath. Elite, and, and legal distance for walking on that day was to the synagogue and then back home again. But 
word had gotten out. Maybe they had seen Jesus heal that demon-possessed man at the at the uh, synagogue, or maybe their relatives came home and told them about it. Maybe Jesus could help me, too, some of them must have been thinking. Or maybe he could help one of my loved ones. And what are we waiting for? Do we really have to wait for the sun to set so Sabbath to be over? Why can't we go now? And so there's this anticipation. Now, there wasn't any email back then, no Zoom sessions, no Facebook status updates. So how did all of these people go home saying the same thing? Can you picture this mob of sick and diseased people just waiting for the sun to finally go down so they could all rush to see Jesus? Pain does that. My friends, you're no different. Sunday morning dawns loaded down with a week's worth of of worry and stress and pain and, and sickness and guilt. Imagine you look forward in your own way to going to see Jesus for help. People in our text had specific reasons to going to see Jesus. They all had these problems, and apparently every person in town was involved in some way, whether sick or, or bringing the sick. Just imagine the streets full of people, maybe some 2,000 people, waiting for the sun to set. And then from every direction, they come heading in the direction where they saw Jesus leave the synagogue so that he could help. Again, as Mark records it so beautifully, that's what Jesus did in verse 34. Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons. Yeah, he helped. He healed. He drove out demons. He didn't get a Sunday after, or Saturday afternoon nap in after preaching, no. He had had a long day, but he healed people because he cared for them physically. My friends, he cares about your physical needs, too. And he does heal you. You can say 99.9% .9 of the time. But even if you have to suffer with a lingering illness, he hasn't forgotten you. Deep down, we know that we all have that 0.1% to deal with, that small part that Jesus won't heal, not because he can't, because he wants us to remember that he has something better in store for us than this life. See, Jesus went to a cross to pay the price you owed and rose from the grave to assure you of the place where no one needs to be healed. This is Jesus' plan for you. As much as he cares about your physical health, ultimately he cares more about your spiritual health. Text goes on in verse 35 to say, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Don't miss the point here. Jesus, he was up until who knows what hour of the night healing people. And if there was ever a time when we would understand someone sleeping in, it would have been the next day. But instead, Jesus wakes up while it's still dark out to get away from the hustle and bustle of the crowd so he can talk with his father. And he prayed. What do you pray about? Well, what does he care about the most? You. He cared the most about your salvation and accomplishing his mission on the cross. That's a comforting thought, isn't it? The one who said, I know my sheep, I call them by name, cares that much for you? He doesn't just pray for a nameless, faceless mass of humanity. He prays with your image in his mind. That's what he's doing here. Not only Jesus spending time with his father perfectly in our place, he's laying down an example for us. He wants us to spend time he wants, he wants to spend time with you as well. Jesus, the Holy God, not only had time to pray, he made time to pray. Saying, go, if you're too busy to pray, well, then you're just too busy. And one, one church father actually put it this way once. If there was ever a reason to be sober in the evening, it is so that you can get up early in the morning to pray and read God's word. Make that time. Ever notice if you put Jesus and his word off in your life with the excuse, I'll get to that later. And later, never seems to come. That's why Jesus longs to heal you spiritually. Not only so that you have time to serve, but also so that you have the energy to be served by him through his word. Jesus heals you to the point. Jesus heals you to point to the greater healing that he wants to do for you spiritually. He wants you spiritually healthy. Fit for life with him forever in heaven. Well, the crowds kept coming. Jesus' disciples went searching, finally tracking him down, proclaiming, everyone is looking for you. And, and Jesus answered. He said, let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages. And his reason? So I can preach there also. That is why I have come. Why did Jesus come? 
primarily to preach. Sure, he, he did much to show his love with physical healing, but more than anything else, he came to heal people spiritually. Let him preach to you through his word to open your eyes to see how he chose the path that led to a cross on Calvary to heal you, not, not just physically, no, but eternally. This is Jesus' plan for you. It's always been his plan for you. How can we not serve a Savior like that? As you make your plans, plan to be served by Jesus through his word and plan to serve him and others with your life. Finally, that's the reason Jesus heals you. Amen. Peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, as you sent your son into the world and he sent his apostles, so now also send your ministers that the world may know your name and the salvation that comes by it. Almighty Father, through your Son, you gave your word to your children on earth. Guard and strengthen those who are hated by the world, because they are not of the world, that not one of them would be lost. Lord of all nations, since it is your will that we pray for all in authority, we believe with confidence that you hear our prayers for our president, governor, congress, legislature, and judges. Teach them the testimony of the truth, that they may be wise and effective in their offices. Eternal Father, you have satisfied, now you have testified that eternal life is given in your Son and that whoever has him has life. You promise also that you will hear whatever we ask according to your will. Comfort and help the sick and the distressed. Heal them and give life to all those who hold your Son in faithful hearts. Holy Father, accept the prayers we offer through your Son, our Savior, and keep us forever in your name and word that we may be one just as you are one. Sanctify us in the truth, for your word is truth. Heavenly Father, your Son in his incarnation took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. He submitted to his mother, honoring and obeying her, so fulfilling the commandment where we have not and where we have not. On this Mother's Day, we graciously we ask you to graciously accept our thanksgiving for our mothers whom you have given to us. She just to honor them aright, loving, obeying, and giving thanks for them, as is fitting in your sight. Strengthen all women with child and give them safe delivery. Comfort all women who long to have children but cannot. They may find their consolation, you and your unfailing love. To the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we are privileged to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Greetings again to you. Happy Mother's Day to the moms that are there out there today. And again, if anything I can do for you, pray for you, uh, visit with you, uh, whatever you may think. I don't be, don't uh, be afraid to get in touch with me. God's blessings on your week and hope to bring God's word to you again soon. Take care.